Dear students, welcome to my channel. Topic of this video is image transform. This is the third video on this topic. In this video, I am going to explain the Walsh transform. Now let us start. The Walsh transform is a special case of the walsh hadamard transform which decomposes a signal using square wave basis functions. These Walsh functions are square waves with values of plus, minus, plus 1 or minus 1 over a specific intervals. The rows of the walsh hadamard matrix can be rearranged in a specific order to obtain the Walsh transform. This order is based on the number of sign changes in each row that is increasing order. The Walsh transform can be used for data compression by identifying and discarding the less significant components of the signal. By analyzing the transform signal, the features like edges, trends and noise can be extracted. Now we will see how we can obtain the Walsh matrix from the walsh hadamard matrix. Now for single element the same, for the H2 and W2 they are same. See here only one sign change and after that here only here zero sign change and here one sign change all are positive so no, no sign change and here the sign change from plus to minus one so it is in increasing order zero sign change and one sign change and here also it will come as the same now for see the there is a difference between the h4 and w4 so now here we require to take first zero sign change so zero sign change is the first row then we require to take the one sign change we can see that this 1 1 and minus 1 minus 1 is a row which represents the one sign change. For example, this is positive and this is negative. So positive to negative only one change is there. So 1 1 minus 1 minus 1. Now we require the two sign change. So for two sign change we take this 1 minus 1, one sign change takes place and after that again minus 1 to plus 1. So only two sign change plus to minus and then minus to 1. So two sign change come and for the last row there is a continuous change. 1 to minus 1, minus 1 to 1 and 1 to minus 1. So positive to negative 1 change, negative to positive second change and again positive to negative third change. So in this way we are obtaining the Walsh transform from the walsh hadamard matrix in such a way that the each row is in an increasing order of the sign change. Now see for H8. H8 we can easily generate from the recursive function that we have already seen our in previous video. Now we just require to arrange this row in such a way that the sign change order is in increasing. So for the first there is zero sign change and for last there is a same change sign change because it is continuously 1 minus 1, 1 minus 1. So we require to take this particular row and arrange at the last. Now we will see the exercises on one dimensional signal. To convert one dimension signal from time domain to Walsh domain. Here for simplicity, we are taking the unnormalized transformation matrix. We can take the normalized transformation matrix, so we there is only slightly change in formula. But for simplicity, I have used unnormalized transformation matrix. So formula is x of n is equal to w of n into x of n. This is our signal which is in time domain and time domain or special domain, and we are converting into the Walsh domain. And to again back to our original domain, we require to do 1 by n w of n into x of n. So when our signal is one dimensional we are using 1 by n and when our signal is 2 dimensional we are using 1 by n square. So here x of n is input signal in special domain, h of n is Walsh transformation matrix and x of n is transform signal. So the signal which is not in time domain or special domain is always represented in capital. Now see the problem, convert a given one dimensional signal into the Walsh transform and again convert back to the original signal or prove that Walsh transform is reversible in nature. So to go in a forward direction that is x of n is equal to w of n into x of n. Now we require to write down this 4 by 4 matrix. As our signal length is 4, so the w4 is suitable. Then we are writing the signal 1 to 0 3. We require to arrange this signal in such a way that matrix, matrix multiplication can be possible. So when we multiply this matrix, we are getting the result 6 0 2 minus 4. Now we we can convert now we again convert back to our original signal the formula is 1 by n w of n into x of n now 1 by 4 this is our walsh matrix and this is our transform signal so when we multiply again we are getting the back original signal so it proves that walsh transform is reversible in nature because there is no information loss when we are moving from one domain to another domain now this is a similar example 5731 so this is our walsh matrix as a signal length is 4 the w4 is suitable we are multiplying 
this and we get the answer 16.8 minus 40. So this is the signal which is in transform uh, domain. So here the first component there is no sign change so you're, it is a purely low frequency component and after that it is slightly the frequency change more frequency change and very high frequency change so it will find out the signal in which abhi, if you see that 5731 all values are very close to related to each other so it is a purely low frequency component signal so that's why we are getting the higher component value or a high frequency value as a zero so in this way we can separate out different frequency component using the Walsh transform if we want to again back to our original signal we are we can use 1 by n w of n into x of n and we will get the original signal back now if our signal the problem statement is similar if our signal is x of n is 13 comma 15 so only two values are there so we can't use w4 we can use the w2 if three values are there then we have to use w4 in which we can padding one extra zero into this signal now it is of length 2 so we can use w2 so we are simply multiplying this w2 into our input signal to get the transform domain value and if we want again back original value then 1 by 2 w of n into x of n and we will get our original signal back so in this way we can apply the Walsh transform to convert the signal from time domain or spatial domain to the Walsh domain and again if we want we can reverse back our signal now convert the signal 711 so this is a similar example and we will get the value if we want to again back to our original signal now exercises on two dimensional signal when we want to convert two dimensional signal from time domain to Walsh domain we require to multiply this w of n wise because one is for row, of, row wise and second is for column wise so w of n into x of n so it will uh, act on the row and after that it will act on the column so here this is nothing but your our Walsh matrix input signal and when to take original signal back here we require to use 1 by n square 1 by n square w of n into x of n into w of n as we are using unnormalized transformation matrix now the problem statement is given this is the input signal and we require to convert now this signal is two dimensional so we require to apply twice w of n into x of n w of n the signal is of 4 by 4 so w4 is suitable so this w of n into x of n into w of n first we will multiply these matrices we will get this after that we multiply this and this and we will get the final answer so this is nothing but the two dimensional signal in Walsh domain when we want to take back again then we are using 1 by n square that is 1 by 16 Walsh transform signal into again Walsh signal and we are doing this multiplication sequentially first these two matrices after that these two and that is resultant into this and we will get the original signal back now again another similar example is given So in this way we can convert the signal from time domain or special domain to the another domain or a frequency domain and to reverse back we are using the same formula that is 1 by n square w of n into x of n and w of n and we will get our original signal back. Now if signal is of 2 by 2 we can use the w2 matrix so this is very easy to multiply and when we want reverse back this is a similar operation only instead of w4 here we are taking w2 and when we want to take reverse back we are using 1 by n square that is nothing but 1 by 4 and we will get a signal back so in this way we can apply the Walsh transform now if one dimensional signal contains three values then we have to append one zero to make the size of four so we are making our input matrix in such a way that any one combination like h2 h1 h2 
then uh, so sorry w1 w2 w4 w8 we can use any type of combination similarly we can append the necessary zero for two dimensional signal so this is all about the walsh transform how it is obtained from the walsh hadamard transform and how we are converting the signal from time domain or special domain to the walsh domain and again back to our time domain or special domain thank you